And this is what it says in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Wow. Keep your heart with all diligence. So well, let, me, um, let me ask you another question. When's the last time you did some heart work? When's the last time you did some cleansing work? I don't want to give this testimony tonight, but I'll tell you one of, the, one of the moments in my life that was so defining is when I was listening to someone preach on the Lord's Prayer, and it's on the Lord's Prayer, and he just used the phrase. And I'd actually heard this guy preach the same sermon three times. And I'm thinking this next time, because we were on a preaching circuit together, and I was preaching, and every time he would show up, that was the sermon he preached. He felt like the Lord gave him that for the body of Christ. And so I was preaching all kinds of things, and he was preaching the same sermon. So honestly, I kind of tuned him out, and I thought, I've already heard this three times. And so when he got up to preach, he's preaching on the Lord's Prayer. Did a great job. The sermon was great. And he got to this part, Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to do that. And I had no idea. I said, Lord, I don't have any enemies that I know of. The Lord said, oh, no, you've got so many things buried in your heart that it's going to rob you of your future if you don't clean out your heart. And I said, well, show me what I need to clean out. And so he put me on a journey and I wish I could have told you that it only lasted a week or so. It lasted two years. And in that two-year period of time, I had to write some letters and put it on some graves. In that period of time, I had to make some phone calls. I even had to write a check to someone who robbed me, thinking, I don't know what I thought would happen the next time, the next time I gave them the same amount of check for what they stole from me. But you know what they did? They just cashed the check. <laughs> and I said, Lord... Wasn't something supposed to happen? I mean, weren't they supposed to cry or call or send a thank you card? He said, no, it's not about that. It wasn't about them. They're wicked. It's about you. It's about you. Are you free of this or do you need to write another check? I said, no, Lord, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No more. I I'm good, Father. And the Lord put me on a journey that I didn't even know I needed, and I realized that I had heart issues that I'd never dealt with, things that I'd stuffed down for years People I'd never forgiven, I just quit talking about them and thinking about them, but I never really forgave them. And so God put me on a journey that literally changed my life, and this is the reason he did it. He told me that I had a cap, and that unless I removed that cap, I couldn't go any further than that. He can only take me so far, and then unless I cleanse my heart, who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a what? So I can only go up as high as my heart is empty. So unless I was willing to clean, yes, God will still use you here, but he cannot use you here. God will still anoint you here, but he cannot anoint you here. God will still show you things here, but you cannot learn what others can learn here because your heart is weighing you down. You have too much weight to climb the hill of the Lord. So this passage in the Message Bible says, keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Wow. So have you ever stopped to consider all the phrases we use about our heart and why we say things the way we say those? Uh, things like this, and I put a list up here for you. So think about these lists. Things like, I love you with all of my heart. What do we mean when we say that? I mean, we don't say, I love you with half of my heart. That wouldn't go over too well on a date, would it? I just love you with half of my heart. It wouldn't go over. No, what do we say? I love you with all of my heart. My heart is so full. What do we mean by that when we say that? My heart is so full. That means I'm happy. That means, that means I'm feeling good. I'm joyful because my heart is full. You have broken my heart or you have broken their heart. Has anybody ever had a broken heart? Did you have to go in for surgery for that or what happened? No, but you've had a broken heart. Don't raise your hand for this one. Have you ever broken someone else's heart? Just keep that one to yourself. I, I had a change of heart. Anybody ever said that before? I've, I've had a change of heart. Or how about, do you have something on your heart? And there's other ones, let's, let's look at more. Eat your heart out. Don't you love that one? What do, what do we mean by that? That means, you know what? If you're jealous, that's your problem. Eat your heart out. We're going to do this anyway. Or how about he or she has a heart of gold? Try cashing that one in. He or she has a heart of gold. We use these phrases and we mean something by them because all of them are, are things we actually relate to emotionally. Emotionally. 
Thank you so much for supporting our ministry. If this has blessed you, please say a prayer for us. And if you would like to give, we have four ways that you can do that. You can give online at briancutshaw.com. Or if you're a PayPal user, just PayPal us at Church Trainer. Or you can also give through the mail at P.O. Box 267, Georgetown, Tennessee, 37336. Or if you're a Venmo user, you can Venmo us also at Church Trainer. Thank you, and God bless you, and may the Lord multiply your seed. Now back to Hope in the Word. I cross my heart. Anybody ever done a pinky square with your, swear with your friends? My little, you know, I see little girls and little boys, pinky swear, cross their heart. That just means they're going to keep their promise. When I heard that, my heart skipped a beat. And you didn't have a pacemaker either. That's just what we say. You wear your heart on your sleeve. What does that mean? Someone gets their feelings hurt easily, right? They wear their emotions right out there. It's, uh, everybody can see them. Keep it close to your heart. You are a person after my own heart. Or how about this one? Follow your heart. Or here's the one I want to focus on tonight. I have a heavy heart. What does that mean? I feel some kind of weight on me emotionally that I can't seem to get rid of. And so the phrase I use is that I have a heavy heart. All of these idioms are indicating that there's something going on in our soul. What we're calling our heart is what the Bible would call our soul. So what we're saying by these idioms is that I have something going on in my soul that is weighing me down. It's indicating that I need to do some work on my heart, just like what the Lord told me to do. And I had to work on it to go up. He may ascend to the hill of the Lord who has clean hands and a a pure heart. So I have a question for you tonight. How heavy is your heart? So how heavy is your heart? Do you have things in there that keep you up at night? Do you have things in there that won't let you talk to certain people? Do you have things in there that trigger you into anger? Do you have things in there that keep you from praying about certain things? Do you have things in there that keep you from trusting? Do you have issues of your heart that keep you from loving? Some people get hurt and choose not to love again because love hurts. Yes, love does hurt. It also feels pretty good. There's risk when you love someone, but there's also great reward. So so one of the issues, how heavy is your heart? If you know anybody that's ever had heart trouble, now I am speaking about your body. If you know anybody that has heart trouble, tell me some of the things you have to do at the doctor's office if you have heart trouble. Just shout them out to me. Your family history, EKGs, I heard that, CT scans, MRIs, echocardiograms. So what you're telling me is that there are tests that they can give you to help you, help them look inside of your heart. Now, I know we have nurses here, so you can probably tell us all these things. Are there ways to look inside someone's heart with a machine and see what's going on inside their heart? Wow. So there are tests that the doctor can look at my heart and let me know if I need to work on it or change something in my life. Well, did you know that the Bible says there is another test? Now, it's not an EKG, but there is another test that Jesus told us that shows us what is inside of our heart. Jesus said, this is the test. What comes out of your mouth reveals what is in your heart. Now, either you can say amen or oh me right there. That's a good place for both, right? So Jesus said there is a test that reveals what's in your heart, and the test is the words that are coming out of your mouth. Now, what makes this part of this, uh, of, of this, this instruction so interesting is that the Pharisees were judging Jesus for not washing his hands. Evidently, I'm sure Jesus believed in washing hands, but evidently he picked up something, and they didn't see him do a ritual cleansing of his hands, and they started judging him, and here he is a guy who can heal the lame, 
the blinded eyes walk on water. I mean, and they're judging him for not washing his hands. I don't know how, I don't know how it makes the Pharisees look to you, but to me, it's like, come on, guys. Is that all you got? And Jesus says, don't you see, whatever enters your mouth and goes into your mouth and then comes out of your body, no graphics for that one, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. If something goes in your mouth, it gets processed, goes out of your body, and is eliminated. But if things come out of your mouth, it's emanating from your heart, and therefore people are defiled, not by what they're eating, but by what they're saying. This program is brought to you by the partners of Brian Cutshaw and Church Trainer Ministries. Please help us pray that the Lord will continue to send us more partners so we can expand His kingdom around the world.